All right, so now I've merged, or I haven't merged them, but I've uh, placed all of my different features together. I have them separated as a head folder with lots of overlap for the neck there. But I can kind of see there how, what the spine's doing. It's curving on itself, has this nice little paunch around its hips. A tail folder where the curve is meant to be distorted going out of the pelvis and coming from that spine through the tailbone. And they're all layered on top of each other. So what do I do next? The first thing I want to do is now start cutting them out. And so to do that, I'm going to take the obvious edges that I need to clean, like around the belly here, and deal with that first. So that's going to specific layers. So that's where uh, using the move tool with auto select can really help. And that will select the exact layer at 100% opacity I need to cut out. I'm going to use the feathering of only two pixels here. And I'm just going to use my lasso and kind of selectively pick the edge, kind of cutting into this wet fur. It looks a little bit like the coloring of, a, of an avocado. Because the edges of the photo reference are already kind of blurred, since this is the back edge of the seal. I can do it in chunks. Hit delete. And because I feathered it, I can hit delete multiple times and kind of take away at different stages. And that gives me a nice, a nice edge. So even feathering a little bit will give you more options than not feathering your selections at all. There is this unfortunate green light, you know, reflected. This is called reflected light in photography. Um, onto the underside of my belly. And that would work if my side duck is in a green field, but I want to design it so that it's not. So that's going to be something I color correct, probably with the uh, smudge tool. Not the smudge tool, I'm sorry, the sponge tool to desaturate the green. But before I can fix lighting and coloring, I just want to cut out the elements that I know matter especially where they overlap with other elements like the feet. And then I think I actually want to merge these two layers. I have a separate layer for the back right there, which is kind of fun. That looks like the leg muscle. So that worked out. And for the belly, so let me merge those together so I only have to erase away from them once. So I select both of them, I go to Layer, and I say Merge Layers. Remember, I already blended them in together, so I don't have any hard edges on the interior. Now, because we're at 150 resolution, when I zoom in this much, it will say 200% in the bottom left-hand corner of PhotoP. Photoshop does something similar. And so if it looks a little blurry to you, that's okay because this isn't the actual resolution that you're gonna see. I hit Command minus and you see the actual resolution. And so that looks a lot sharper. And I try not to zoom in more than 200 or 300% because it is kind of wasting, wasting time to look at that level of detail.
when your viewer is not going to be able to tell or see it. So I like the little furry kind of spiky back, so I might pick up a little bit more of those on this side than I did on the other side with my selection. But I still have it feathered at two pixels. So when you feather, it just gradates your selection a little bit and softens it by only a few pixels. But that means each time you hit delete, it will keep softening it more and smoothing it out. So when I zig and zag a little wrong with my trackpad, like I did right there, the feathering will smooth it out for me. And then I hit delete a few times to kind of cut back to what I think works. I'll cut into this green a little bit more. So I want to have space for those feathers. Okay, so lots of selections and cutouts. I can also jump a little bit to lighting as I notice it. So I can take my burn tool and the midtones and I can darken that green a little bit, not too much. Remember the burn tool, can you can overdo it pretty easily. Darken it a bit. And then if I'm anxious about it, I can always go right to the sponge tool on this layer because I've already cut out this layer desaturate at a flow of less than 30, large soft brush. And that should take out the green. In a targeted way without changing the other colors. Okay, and the next thing I want to cut out are the feet. Because I know that they're covering things up, like the tail, and I want to, when I get to the tail, I want to be sure that um, I know how everything will, will layer together. So the feet should be fun. They're nice and sharp. It's, it's high quality reference. So I can get to them again by using my auto select tool. It will find that layer for me. Shows me right away, I can get rid of this little lump here that's overlapping my tail. And then I could try other methods than just the lasso, right? I could try magic wand with contiguous turned on. Hold down shift and add to it. But I'm likely to get a lot of debris, right? So sometimes that can help, but often you end up just having to go in anyway with your lasso. So I like the, the lasso with a slight feathering to it. I can find it meditative and then I don't need to worry about these little halos that come from using the magic wand. But it depends on the texture you're trying to cut out, right? And I love the fact that you can just delete a couple times and it will go to a nice edge. This is also why we have a gray background instead of the checkerboard background, because you can see better uh, what the pixels are doing and how they'll exist when you put them onto your, to your landscape. If I have a bright white background, sometimes that kind of washes it out and it makes everything look different than it will look when it's in my landscape. So I like the middle gray. 
And we'll use that again when we do logo design, anything we want to be versatile. We're trying to create collage creatures here that are really versatile that we could put into lots of different types of environments. When we design a logo, we want it to be nice and versatile. So we can put that logo on a lot of different environments to a lot of different uses. Same thing with the spot illustration. If we design something to go onto a t-shirt, we want it to look good on red t-shirts and on black t-shirts and on gray t-shirts and on white t-shirts. That's getting the most out of our design. That's one of the great advantages of digital work is how versatile it is. Now along the, the bottom of the feet here, I feel like I could probably get away with a sharper feather. So I'm going to change it to just one pixel because this isn't fur or feathers. This is nail and whatever duck's feet are made out of. It's a harder material that can support a harder edge. It's less translucent than hair or feather. So the edge won't be quite so soft. And you can shape, you get to be the manicurist for your, and pedicurist for your uh, creatures. You can decide if they have blunt nails or sharp nails. You can be their retouch artist and correct blemishes. All these raster programs do is give you control of every pixel. So you decide what to do with it. The people I know who work in compositing, the frustration of their job is not that they don't enjoy the skills that they're using, the frustrations they have in the job are often all just from the limitations of the source material. Right? So I made a mistake there where I cut in a little bit too far. So remember you have your history and what's great about your history using the lasso is I don't have to just re-select everything. I can just augment my selection before I hit delete. So I just hold down option and I can subtract from my selection. That's because every once in a while, middle gray will look like it's part of your image when it's not. And I'm zoomed in at 300%. This is as much as I should ever zoom in because this is kind of inviting me to obsess over little details that don't actually matter to the resolution of the, the finished project. But I like looking at these feet. When I first played with Photoshop, it was in 1994, and I was putting together a portfolio for an art school um, in Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo in California, and I was applying out of high school to the graphic design program. And even in the early 90s, they were requiring a Photoshop project for their portfolios. Only one, you know, it was very basic. You just had to make like a little pamphlet advertising your artwork using Photoshop. And so I didn't have Photoshop. I didn't have a computer anywhere near powerful enough to run it. So a friend of mine, um, their mother worked at a place 